Hello friends, welcome to this Kundinyasana B session. In this session we're gonna go detail into Kundinyasana B and what parts do we have to engage and what parts do we have to actually open up to have like a proper Kundinyasana B. If you are not warmed up, please warm up, do some sun salutation, do your own warming up um, like a general warm-up, maybe uh, acknowledging and realizing your spine back again, your hips. This is very important before you start your practice. Uh, if you cannot, <laughs> if you cannot uh, do your by, by yourself, in my channel you have some sun salutation session, you have some hip sessions. Go do one sun salutation, do one hip session. It, more, more or less it's going to be 45 minutes in total and then after that 45 minutes you will meet me here for the Kundinyasana P. Okay, so here we're gonna start in tabletop position. We're gonna a little bit warm up the hips before we start but before we go in through I want you to hear Gently from here going to Chaturanga. So you move your shoulders forward and bending your elbows and going down and gazing forward. And then you push back and then come all the way back to child pose. Again, one more time. You move forward. Keep practicing this cat pose while moving forward. I'm protracting my scapula, moving forward, bending my elbows like in Chaturanga and gently going down and pushing all the way back. One more time, send the hip all the way to your heels and then come forward, reach forward. As soon as your shoulders cross your wrist, you start to bend the elbows, gazing forward. And then again, push all the way back. Very nice. Now bring your left foot forward. I assume that you did one of the hip sessions or you warmed up your hips because in Kundinyasana it's very important to have uh, uh, open hips. Uh, hip flexion here is very important and also if, if you are like also working very deep into your Kundinyasana also Hanuman is perfect for getting ready for it because in Hanuman we open the hips and all and so on. So now here, now I'm in lizard, I tuck the toe right toe behind and lift the right knee off the ground. Find your lizard and gaze forward. In Kundinyasana also I'm always gazing forward, very important. And now gently inhale with exhalation, straighten the left knee and pull the belly in and come to this variation of pyramid pose and then again move forward come to your lizard and this time lower your hip a little bit more than like your lizard down in chest open and then exhaling straightening the left knee one more time moving forward hip down open your chest and exhaling going all the way one more time, move forward and here come to your central way of lizard and here we try to push the ground with our hands and lift the left foot off the ground, very nice, strong and then gently send the left foot back finding your plank pose and lowering down to your chaturanga and inhaling low cobra, exhaling downward facing dog. Get the right foot outside of your right hand and then practicing the lizard here, gazing forward, hip down low and then here again. Inhale with exhalation, straighten the right knee and come to this variation of the pyramid. Inhaling, bending the right knee and lowering your hip more than usual and exhaling, getting the hip all the way back straightening the right foot one more time getting forward lowering the hip all the way down just forward and exhaling coming all the way back one more time lower the hip come to center this time lift the right foot push the floor and lift the right foot off the ground and gently send it all the way back finding your plank pose exhaling to chaturanga inhaling to 
up dog and exhaling to hip all the way to heels the child pose and inhale coming to the center so also very important that we warm up the wrist so some circles from right to left when i'm doing the circle i'm crossing my hands over and then coming back again two more feel your wrist grab the ground as much as you can and from the other way around left to right start turning it's an arm balance yes and here it's very important how we activate the leg behind so now we warm up the hip a little bit not too much but you already warmed it up so i'm not gonna go that much in detail so get the left foot between the hands and untuck the toe behind right foot is untucked first come to your low lunge have your hands on your waist now i my rear foot is untucked and from here i'm activating my right leg and i'm lifting to high lunge with untucked toe exhale gently down sink in inhale activate the foot behind and then from here reach forward and then lift the right foot off the ground coming to your warrior three gently tuck the toe to high lunge exhale hands down send the left leg all the way back to chaturanga inhale up dog exhale down dog inhale left leg goes up exhale bring the left foot between the hands right knee on the ground untuck the toe and one more time inhale reach up to high lunge move hands forward and then lift your third warrior and exhaling feet down hands down to uttanasana inhale gaze forward send the left foot all the way back place the left knee down and untuck the toe find your low lunge here set the hip down low hands on the waist maybe and now i'm activating the left foot and i'm lifting the left knee off the ground very active left leg and then gently releasing it down one more time inhale activate the foot send the hands all the way up reach forward find your third warrior activating both of the feet and exhaling tugging the toe behind inhaling high lunge exhaling hands down sending the right leg back finding your chaturanga inhaling up dog and exhaling down dog. inhale right foot up exhale bring the right foot between the hands left knee gently down and find your untuck the toe behind find your low lunge now we're going to activate the foot but it's very important that you are concentrating on this activation now let's go activate the foot move hands forward and then lift the left foot off the ground third warrior inhale exhaling feet down to uttanasana head down inhale halfway through right leg goes back left leg goes back to plank pose lower the knees to tabletop so here I'm going to practice something let's first do one cow inhale to cow and then exhale to cat inhale to cow now with inhalation keep the cow and open the left knee to the left side exactly and try to get the left knee to the left armpit by keeping the cow please keep the cow and pull it to touch it touch it touch it touch it touch it and release very nice again cat cow sorry and cat push the ground inhale cow and now this time lift the right foot off the ground keep the cow and pull the right knee to the right armpit as much as you can pull 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 
and then release, very nice. Again, inhale, cow, exhale, cat. Inhale, cow, exhale, cat. Now, in cat, keep the cat and lift the left foot, left knee to the side again and pull the left knee to the armpit in the cat, immediately touching your armpit and releasing it. So keep the cat and lift the right leg off the ground and then get the right knee closer to your armpit, immediately touching your armpit and release it. So, as you can see, while we are doing cat, we are creating space for my hip to come forward to my armpit and to my arm. So, just like in Kuminyasana, you have to create space for yourself so you can pull the knee to the arm. So now we're going to mix the first movement and this movement together. So let's come to tabletop first. Now, exhaling, coming to cat. Now lift the left knee. While bringing the left knee to your armpit, start moving forward like we did. And then bend your knees to Chaturanga, arms gazing forward. You see? how I open my hip to the side and how you open your hip to the side and now push back and bring the left foot to where it was. Now, again, inhale cow, exhale to cat, lift the right knee off the ground and now move forward, tap your right armpit and then gaze forward, opening the right knee to the side and gazing forward and my chest is forward and now push it all the way back very nice it's very important that you put it there and you just did like a small touch with your elbow so you open the knee to the side also it's very important while in your kumunyasana like we did we moved forward and we gazed forward we didn't drop the chest down let's practice that little bit Opening the chest, moving forward, lay down on your mat or the ground, and the Shalabhasana. Chest up, hands back, feet up. Very nice. Lower down. One more time. Chest up, feet up, lower down. Very nice. So here. I want you to notice this, in Shalabhasana, my scapula is retracted, they are getting closer to each other, so I can lift my chest. In Kumvinyasana, I don't have that retraction, rather I am protracting to create space and stay strong. So, what you have to do, while protracting the scapula, you need to do like in Shalabhasana, opening your chest forward, so don't Close your shoulders in while retracting your, while protracting your scapula. So my scapula is protracted, but my chest is forward. So I am leaning forward with my chest. Now we're going to practice this in Kumbhinyasana. First, we don't lift the leg behind. First, we're just going to experience putting this leg to where it has to be and gazing forward. So let's go with the downward facing dog. Come to the downward facing dog. Maybe just watch me one more time and then we practice it together. So I lift the one leg up, left leg goes up. I bend the knee. I'm starting, you see, this is very important. My right leg, the foot and the back, coming on the tip of my toe, creating more space for my feet to come, bring it, bring it, bring it forward. When I start to touch, I start to, to lower down to Chaturanga, gazing forward. And then I push all the way back, finding my downward facing dog. Now we're going to do it together. One of the trick here is to place your elbow or place your inner thighs as close as you can to your elbow. So if you place your elbow closer to your knee, you are away from the center of your body, the weight center of your body. So it's much more difficult to carry 
all the weight of your body. So we're gonna try to place our elbow as close as to our thigh so we can create a better space, better balance with the body to side to side. So let's meet in the downward facing dog. So in downward facing dog, inhale, we lift the left foot up. We move forward, coming tip of our right toes, bending the left knee, creating space. As soon as I get closer to my armpit, I bend my elbows to Chaturanga, gazing forward. And then I push all the way back. Place down the left foot to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Start bringing the right foot all the way up. Coming to your left tip of toes. As soon as the leg comes closer to the armpit, I start bending my elbows forward to Chaturanga, gazing forward. And then I push all the way back to downward facing dog. Very nice. If you want to keep practice this little couple of more times, please be my guest, practice. Now we're going to start to lift the right foot up. But how is that going to happen? Mostly we do jump and stuff like that. Yes, I know, I know, I know. No. Like we did in our previous exercise, going to third warrior, we activated the foot. The foot in the back was point and it is activated from my hip to my toes. So, when we come to our chaturanga, Again, watch me now, I'm showing what we're going to do. We come all the way up, find the space, place it here, gaze forward, lower down, just activate the foot at the back. And then down, we're facing dog. By moving forward, I'm creating more space with my I'm, I'm creating more weight with my upper body forward. So only by activating my right foot, my foot in the back, it's lifting off the ground. It's not jumping, doing nothing. It already, it's gonna already feel uh, light when you actually settle yourself down into your kumbhinyasana arms and leg. The rear leg starts to feel light Anyways, so another trick, if, so we brought this leg to forward, bend it. So I brought this leg, bend it and brought it here and settle down. If I open this leg, I create more weight forward. So this leg lifts up easily. You can try it. You can try it, bend it. You can try it, straighten it. So now we go to try Kumbhinyasana one more time together. Let's come to downward facing dog. Now, inhale, lift the left foot up. Exhale, bring it all the way forward, place it down, chaturanga arms, gaze forward and move forward and lift the right foot off. Very nice, settle down. Push to down facing dog. Very good, guys. The other side as well. Bring the right foot up. Bend the knee. Start moving forward. Place it as close as you can. And then maybe straighten the foot. And come to Kundinyasana. And then down to Chaturanga. And then to upward facing dog or half cobra. And then to child pose or sit on the heels so couple of tricks you have first one chaturanga arms chest forward gaze forward second one the knee has to come and you need to make a space for the knee so it can travel from a bigger space to settle itself to your elbow settling it this is the second one. The third one, settling it onto your elbow. You want to get it as close as your body, as your thighs. Putting it here is an advantage. Here is a disadvantage. So you have to put it closer to here. That requires a lot more flexibility in the hips. 
but we have a lot of videos, a lot of practices, and also you can do a lot of practices to open up your hips, which will ground you a little bit more. This was the third one. The fourth one, once you place it, don't know jumping, always moving forward and creating that pulling and pushing within your hands so you create that balance. The fourth one. The fifth one, the back behind, the leg behind. Only by activating it, you can lift it up. You don't have to push it up or anything. Just activate from hips to toes and you will be easily there. If you wanting to go through a deeper sessions in some other platforms, you can find some other videos of mine or some other people as well, of course, or maybe we meet in another workshop or you can reach me anytime you want to ask about anything. Thank you for practicing together with me. Enjoy it. Namaste.